Hello. Turn that. Okay. <laughs> this meeting is now called to order at four thirty-four Wednesday, February fifteenth. Uh, let's begin with the roll call. Allison Vicenzi. Kevin Stewart. Christina Nelson. Rick Van Aken. Lisa Garcia. Quentin Schwartz is here. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you. Great <laughs> Okay. okay. I'm going to pull up my agenda here. Thank you all for being here. Accessibility shortcuts. Oh, close. Button. What? <laughs> Okay, first up is an approval of the minutes from our January 18th meeting. Motion to approve. Motion, motion from Lisa, do I have a second to approve the minutes? Second. All in favor or any comments? Aye. Aye. Okay, Moving on. Facade grants. We have not received any applications or any updated information since our last meeting. Patricia, are you here to discuss facade grants by chance? Because you can um, do that now if you'd like. To. Okay. Second, I just up my uh, sure. Uh, if you'd like to announce to yourself, I guess, to anyone. I think we might all. Oh, I'm so shocked. Oh, it's okay. You could do it from there. No, you can do it from there. Yeah. It'll. We'll get you from there. I'm sorry. I'm not shy. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I just wanted to. I had gotten a communication from you. Yes. And we had been approved for a grant for the Great Wall, and we hadn't been in touch, but we wanted to. We have till next summer. It's my understanding. Okay. And the winter just came in, and it is for painting of the windows and repairing of the windows for the gravel and the uh, window um, sills on the outside. We're trying to repair according to the State Historic Preservation Office. So I just wanted to let you know that we are still are in running for that grant would like very much to have that application considered. I mean, you, you approved us, so. Yes, okay. so is the work still being completed? Well, no, it's, it can't be completed during the winter. It wasn't, okay. I think we were under the impression it was going to be completed in the fall, but we know timelines change, so this yeah, is all it, fine. There's just. It's all fine. It's, well, just, You're good. Let me give you just the specifics of this one. Because the window sills of these historic buildings that we won't change out the windows. Long story, but the State Preservation Office does not really want you to put new windows to historic buildings like this because the wood is not married to itself. Long story, but it's a better way to go. But we have to fix the sills first, which is a pretty complicated process. And that'll take a month of my probably my son will do that because he's pretty okay. picky about that and then let's have a painter come in and paint the you know so probably won't even start till april or when the window will allow it then we'll work pretty intensely for about a month so it will be done i think within your time great so i just wanted to let you know appreciate it yeah, right. we, we have you for eight thousand. 250, would that be the half of the project cost estimate? 
Yes. Okay, so just keep any invoices and receipts. If your son is doing the work though, we He's might. Not. Oh, okay, just, I thought that's just overseeing the window. The wood has kind of come apart like this. Sure. And you have to, the state historic uh, preservation architect, by the way, is really good. And he's recommended the way to mitigate that. So just wanted to right. let you know. Well, Thank we you appreciate it. it. I'm glad you came in person to tell us. Yeah. I'm going to talk to this guy. Are you John? Yes. Thanks. How are you? <laughs> Hi, John. Okay. Hi. okay. <clears throat> Anybody else in the room have an update on the facade grants? No. So I believe we'll just keep that moving forward as is until we do some deeper strategic planning for the URA in the coming months. So we'll just keep it going. All right. Next up is the <coughs> Applicants to fill the board vacancies. So we had two applications come in in the last few weeks and they're in the packet if you'd like to review them. Now. We just have one vacancy. Correct. So, uh, yeah, because does anybody have any? Alec, we've chosen in the past when there are two. That's a good question. <laughs> I have not been here when we've had two to consider at once. I have not either. And you know, it can be the like seats can be coming up every, you know, we're all staggered in our start time. So maybe every six months to a year we might have another opening. If people decide to not continue on their, in their seat here. Um, but, you know, so we can keep people on, wh whoever we don't choose, it's not necessarily saying we don't like you, you're never gonna be able to be part of the URA. And especially as we, it, we can come out with some new programs, it might be helpful to get people on board as sort of the public champions of some of these programs. So that said, um, We still do have to choose who we'd like to move forward with for this particular vacancy, assuming we do want to move forward with one of these two, unless anybody sees red flags, I guess, with either. I definitely don't see a reason to hold out. I feel like you waited like six months for one application. Yeah. I can't believe we have two now. <laughs> After all that time. <laughs> <clears throat> Unless we had further questions for either, I guess we are looking for a motion to move forward with one or the other. And then someone to second that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, or I, I just, I'm not a board member here, but I would offer we appreciate it. Alternately, uh, if if there wasn't one candidate that rose above the other in people's minds, you could invite them back to the next meeting and, and you know, interview them and have a discussion with them about their interest if, if there's no decision now. Um, the only no thing I would note is that <coughs> one of the two candidates does appear to live in the district. So that might oh, be sure. um, mm. you know, one differentiating factor. Sure. Yeah, what, what if we most for them to come in for an interview? I like that. Yeah, it's so hard to choose from yeah. There's just not a lot of Me questions too. on this. I, but I don't, yeah. I don't know either one of them. Um, 
the uh, they seem like they have uh, uh, reasonably comparable background, I guess. The other note is that Julie is retired, which may mean she could have more time. I don't want to make any assumptions on that, and it would be nice to hear from her directly, but. Um, yeah, the theory being that retirees are more available. <laughs> Just looking to get active. She actually found out about it through our newspaper article uh -huh. that was on the traffic box wraps. And then we play pickleball together. So she, I you. that I came you. up. That was <laughs> nice. It came up and she was saying she was looking for ways to get involved in Livingston. I, I think it's helpful if I provide the background, but I guess either way we can motion to have them come. So at Pickleball, she was asking me about the URA and I mentioned we had an opening and she was looking to get more involved in the community. And then Angela messaged me after I posted a quick update after the last week's um, city commission meeting, just saying I watch the space, very exciting. Mentioned the URA meetings are open. I didn't mention the opening there in the board, but she must have found it through that. So they both sort of reached out because they're looking for some ways to get involved, which I think is the right road that we're looking for. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead with that and go from there? Is there a motion for that to invite them to come to our next meeting? Yeah, I would accept it. Okay. Yeah. Rick, motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I guess my question though, like just for process, do we have to decide on the spot while they're with us in the meeting? Uh, if you would like to delay it to or continue it to a subsequent meeting, you could certainly do that, but you know, that'd be another month out. So a number of other boards do have a question and answer session and then um, get a motion in or second. To a point at that same meeting. Okay. Yeah, you certainly can do it at the meeting, you know, in the presence. Yeah. There's no like deliberation though that we can do privately. That's the only thing. Right. Well, you have to be open. Yeah. Yeah. You can always ask them. But it, you can always excuse them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who you don't choose, you can. You know, would you like to be kept on the list if the well, vacancy opens up? You know, <clears throat> I look at like I would invite at this stage, knowing what little I know about them, I invite both of them to mm -hmm. come and sit in and <clears throat> and uh, witness the whole whole thing before they. You know, it's it's really tough to jump in with with both feet into the middle of something if you don't really know anything about it. Sure. Okay. So. All right, well, we will invite them and see what happens. Hopefully they can both make the next meeting. Yeah. I will send them emails. Okay. Any other comments on the board vacancy? Nope. Okay. We don't need to do any further recruiting. <laughs> Real hard for a while, it looks like, anyway. But yeah, if a, 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 yeah, if a vacancy does open up again, you still have to advertise for it. But, right. You know, but still, um, you have that person's, you know. Info still, whoever you don't choose, and if you would care to have them on the board in the future. So. This might be the section, though, for Christina. You mentioned that her time is up next month. So we are going to put a motion. I'm going to put forth a motion to add that to next month's agenda to discuss. Um, that next steps. Oh, second. 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 Yeah. Third. <laughs> sure. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So.
So our next month's agenda. Moving right along. All right, next section is coming off of last week's growth policy meeting and I was able to meet with Grant on Thursday and we were just discussing possibilities for the URA going forward and wanted to just do some internal concept scoping and you know maybe put together like a general what some kind of work plan might look like and the timing involved. Um, really just want to get everyone's input on what they feel would be a valuable program to work on as the URA team and discuss how we might go setting up a program and then we can create some draft materials for the next meeting to review together before announcing anything publicly. In our meeting, in the meeting last Tuesday about the growth policy, let's see. The four main, let's see. I have it somewhere, sorry. The four main areas to focus on are housing um resiliency place making and community character and i'm missing one the Implem first one implementing the, rec the land use recommendations from chapter 11. okay implementing land use recommendations so with those four areas of focus um does anybody have a place they'd like to start discussing? Or Grant, would you like to fill us in any more? Yeah. For those I, who weren't able to make it? Yeah, I, I guess most immediately applicable to the URA, uh, I'm sure you folks are all very intimately familiar with the Urban Renewal Plan from 2004. Um, but if you're not, uh, I can give you a bit of a, a recap. Um, there was a a number of, of initiatives that were identified in that 2004 urban renewal plan, uh, facade grants and the facade improvement program was one, uh, capital improvements was another. Um, there's a, a bit about transportation in there, and then there's a, a pretty good section um, dedicated to housing and bringing uh, currently vacant or underutilized spaces back into productive use. And so the 2017 or the update to the URA plan in 2017 narrowed the focus to the facade program and the CIP, the capital improvement projects. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like the city and the URA and the community jointly have done a lot of work in the last five years or so on, on those two fronts. Um, and and where the city is wrapping up the capital improvement program um, here and and it doesn't seem like we're getting many facade applications in anymore because a lot of that work is done. And so it, it seems to make a little bit of sense to me to kind of widen our focus back to what the original urban renewal plan was. And, um, and, and you know, housing being one of the focuses of the, of the growth policy implementation, it certainly, certainly seems like there's an opportunity um, for the URA to, to have a role in, in the creation of housing units. And I, myself, the plan, the city planning director and some other city staff have, have met with downtown landowners, um, property owners, business owners, um, the development community. And there are, there are a number of projects that are working to bring second and third floor spaces back into residential use. Um, but there's a number of, of buildings where those that process is in, in, in play. And so it certainly seems like there's an opportunity for the URA. It's it's included in the URA plan. So I think there's an opportunity for the URA to kind of step in a little bit and and possibly create a, a grant program similar to we do what we folks do with facades, where um, you know building owners could come forward and, and seek some money to help that conversion process. And so um, Allison and I have talked about this a few times now, and um, and it, it seemed like something that I wanted to have a conversation with you folks about. And um, I've 
kind of been involved in similar programs, you know, elsewhere. And so if, if this is something that you folks are interested in, my recommendation would be, you know, for us to maybe have a little bit of a discussion here today about kind of the scope of, of the, the program, um, maybe um, some evaluation criteria, because as I see it, similar to with the facade, you folks would kind of put out a call for projects and then let, you know, building owners and property owners come forward with their projects, you know, in an application form. So, um, you know, if we kind of define what the, the program is and, and what you folks would like to see from application materials, then perhaps we can talk a little bit about application review criteria. Um, and, and then, um, you know, me and the team at the city would be happy to kind of get those, those thoughts on paper. And, and then we could, you know, have another discussion uh, at your next meeting, kind of finalize some of those things and, and see if we can, you know, launch this program um, shortly thereafter, probably in early April. Uh, which seems like probably a good time as we are approaching construction season and at least to get it on on the radar of, of um, landowners and, and building owners downtown. So um, that is one of the, you know, kind of more obvious um, areas that I think the URA could be helpful. I mean, there's certainly some work to be done to bring these residential units back into use, but um, probably it's a bit more timely or, you know, quicker to produce units like that rather than just starting from scratch on, a, on an open field somewhere, right? Like the shell already exists, the building's there, uh, probably just some work to bring it back in. So this seems like one of the, the easier um, and more quick ways to perhaps provide some additional housing units, but there are other elements in the urban renewal plan that, that I think you folks could probably participate in as well. And so um, if, if anyone had thoughts on that today, be happy to you know talk about those but if not you know perhaps that's something we would take up at the next meeting um, so uh, yeah i guess that's that's the initial thought process there and uh, i'd be happy to take any questions from the board thank you very much yeah is, is there any uh, place for public comment on this um sure i, I yeah believe... number five is public comment Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You know, but now, you know, deliberate. Yeah. <coughs> kind of hash it out with you guys. You know. Great. You know, you know, how's it look? What are the guidelines and stuff like that? You know, and I, I imagine city staff would. It's you know, we've got to have legal guidelines to do this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So. Would this be coming out of the stock grant budget, or would this be a separate? The rest of our fiscal year, because we only have what, like 100 grand left. That's a great question. And you clarified more than I realized that the a huge portion of our budget, I want to say, actually, I don't know the exact amount off, to, off the top of head, but over half of it goes to these um, CIP projects that the city is now winding down. So the idea being that money is going to become available. So this would be a separate program from the facade grant, we may want to revisit budgets overall and, you know, depending on the applicants coming in in both of those programs, figure out the caps. Um, but this would be money that is coming into us and is not going to be going out to those capital projects anymore. Right. Yeah. And we I didn't think the last thing is, is the alley. Is that, what is that part of the yeah. order? Yeah. And yeah. That's I, it. You know. It, it seems like you folks are in a good position because, you know, if we kind of talk about this, this meeting and the next meeting, then you folks are kind of approaching the beginning of your budget year. And so I think that would be, you know, in April, May is probably a great time for you to start having your budget conversation and kind of think strategically, you know, talking to our finance director, there's about 400,000 or so each year. Um, after all of the, you know, URA expenses, debt service, whatnot, um, that's available for different projects. And so you folks might want to have a conversation strategically in April or May and kind of allocate maybe certain percentages of that, you know, 400,000 to your different strategic priorities, um, recognizing that, you know, that's just kind of your guideline. And if you got one really great application or 10 really great applications for one program, you could, you know, allocate all the money that way on case by case basis. But right. Yeah, you still want to keep the facade program available and stuff like that, obviously. I mean, that's that's huge. 
mm -hmm. makes it made such a huge difference downtown. But you know, if, like, as you well know, a lot of facade work has been done, you know, and, and uh, moving into housing, you know, existing units. Sounds like a good point. Yeah. Well, I think we should be clear that we want to move into affordable housing, not just true. Housing. Yeah, oh yeah, that, 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 that's the thing, you have to have that conversation and yeah. figure out what the guidelines are. And we give the grant, see if it's legal. <laughs> right. Legal, you know? Because affordable and low income right. overlap, but aren't necessarily the same criteria. Absolutely. And so. But yeah, you can give more weight if you're gonna, you know, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can give more weight to the applicant that's going to allow um so it's it's return to, but, or, yeah yeah you sure. know, fixed income you know based rent you know whatever so is there is there an official definition for the city of Livingston or Park County about what affordable housing means and who falls in that bracket? That's a federal thing. Yeah, I was gonna say it's so the, the the federal government um you know, it all bases off the AMI, the area median income, right? And so then um, there's different levels of affordability, whether it's, you know, 60% of AMI, 80% of AMI. Um, you, you know, you can do section eight, you know, there's, you know, different. You know. So it certainly sounds like, you know, we've heard at least from, from one board member that there's a desire for this program to, to support afford the, or the development of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So I can certainly, um, you know, we'll make a note of that as, you know, kind of one of the one of the review criteria. It sounds like is, you know, our, our is the project creating affordable units or just market rate units. So right. um, certainly we can include that in the criteria, and I'll bring back for the next meeting a little bit of information on kind of what different affordability levels are off of the, the Park County AMI. Um, so then, you know, at that point, you folks can have a little bit more of a um, granular conversation about what levels you'd like to target or you know how you'd like to weight applications you know the review the scoring um, those different levels too. yeah so, and how you know how do you monitor it too you know but oh yeah I'll, I'll do affordable housing but you know how do we right. you, know, you know they're proof to that you know because they're a process that they have to go through well, so, so right. you know so I would imagine that it is always a good idea if public funds are being committed, you know, to engage in a, you know, some sort of agreement that governs the use of those funds. Yeah. URA is typically use an owner participation agreement mm -hmm. that kind of lines out, you know, that the URA is giving, you know, X amount of dollars for whatever the project is, but then also kind of conditions the receipt of the money, whether it's, you know, renting only to, you know, 60% of AMI or whether it's a, a duration you know, that that affordability has to stay there, right? right? And so what level of affordability and for how long would, would you folks want to condition that, right? And so, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, um, perhaps it's- There's gotta be some long templates long. out there or something, you know? Oh yeah, and, yeah. and I've got, yeah, I've, you be, I've got yeah. a bunch of them. <laughs> I, I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of scope it out with you folks and, and A, find out if it's something you're interested in and elements that you'd like to see um, that we can bring back next time. So, so I, I hear you on affordability. That's logical. Sir. Yeah. Um, in in the conversion back or conversion to, it's, are there any? Is there a fee structure in place for the city that um, you know associated development fees that go into? beautification or anything like that currently? So we do have um, both impact and connection fees. And so impact fees um, do go into certain different services, right? And, and connection fees really are just more the standard water sewer hookup costs. So, um, and that is, that is a common um, use of funds that I've seen in other urban renewal areas is to, to cover impact fees or Connection fees of, of utilities to kind of cost <coughs> for developers, I like guess, right? Yes. So, okay. and, and that may be, um, you know, one other thing that you folks may want to consider is, um, 
you know, kind of the, the level of the requested grants to the overall project cost, right? And, and I don't know if you folks want to set a threshold of, you know, 10, 25, 50% of the project cost. And then, um, and then also, you know, one of those fundamental questions in urban renewal is, you know, kind of the but for question, which is to say, you know, but for this grant of urban renewal dollars, would this project happen? And, and you know, if the answer to that question is yes, then the project probably doesn't need the urban renewal dollars. And so that might be one consideration, one element of an application that you folks ask is, you know, has other external, um, you know, funding sources been approached and identified and attempted, you know, is, is the URA truly that, you know, that giver or lender of last resort? So I don't know if anybody has any any thoughts on, on on that, or if that's even anything that interests people about you know kind of capping what the participation level would be, or you know assessing whether out, other outside funding's been examined. But, yeah, I think I think we have that sort of question on the facade grant application too, right? Like whether or not there's seeking any other. Oh, or let me that. I don't remember that being on there. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it up. Um, but we do have a there. I was to fifty percent. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it is. <laughs> I think though, like, as far as I know, there aren't any things in currently in progress that meet this in our district um, affordable housing creation downtown. There is one grant that came up that is on Second Street, and that's new construction, which is senior housing. It might be also affordable. I don't know yet. I haven't heard from them in the past few months. And her question to me was, does new construction count for the facade program? And, you know, we've said, well, you know, just apply when the time comes and we can discuss it based on the information we have at that time. So that's one, but I think that a lot of this is, if we put forth an initiative, it's, it's gonna be hard to know, like if, if they would have done it, if we hadn't sort of started this like rally behind it, because it's gonna get, people excited versus facade is hard hard to tell because they're more so like you know just doing it to make sure their building looks nice or it's a, a health violation type thing and then they come to us um, to get the funding whether or not they've looked for other resources they're just glad we're there and giving them money basically but if this is sort of a new-ish program that hasn't been done to, in this capacity that I know of to, to revitalize those downtown units then I, I do think it's, yeah. it's hard. That's yeah, hard it's hard know. to know. And so I would be very interested if anyone had a specific idea on like that. Uh, yeah, on the financing from other places. Like, what if, yeah, are we requesting that they first go look elsewhere and then come to us, basically? And what would be other funding examples, like state grants and federal? Um, yeah, there, there's a number of other external sources, whether it's commercial loans, you know, whether it's state grants, um, just an idea. Yeah, you know, doesn't have to be one of the criteria. No, I'm just curious. And, and you know, I think uh, the chair brought up an interesting question about would would you folks consider new construction in this program um, to the extent that they're you know meeting the you know affordability goals or or workforce housing goals you know is that is that an avenue you folks would entertain for sure but i yeah i do wonder you know the scope and expense of a ground up or even a conversion into from you know commercial use into housing our budget's pretty meager for <laughs> yeah well you gotta figure out how specific do you want it to be you know right right you know, i'm just saying is right. it strictly you know the existing units that you have there in your building you know well no but i think what i was going to was you know the the alternate sources of funding oh yeah yeah right like the amount of money that we're able to give i think that they'll always be able to find somebody they can give them like True. five or ten grand yeah you know you know about what we'll be able to yeah, get I, I see versus like from. yeah so i think to, to that end it's just kind of like i would just target the affordability or market rate or workforce housing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. yeah. In one, oh, sorry, uh, just one note on one point of reference, Grant had spoken to the developers of that redid the Montana block apartments. Um, and those are, they were about $80,000 a unit to the renovate. Yeah. Yeah. Per unit. Right. Per unit. Per yeah. So overall for 12 units, it was the Miles building. It is the Montana block. No, I don't think they're HRDs. But well, it is just south of the pickle barrel. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mike. I think the renovation cost ended up being about 100 or so, $120 a square foot. Okay. Well, you know what I had heard. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I want to say that's cheap. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Relative to new construction. Yeah. Right. So, I know. Yeah. Well, and if we can create a program that <clears throat> helps stagger the build out so that, like, for example, with the facade grant, there's usually one or two per year that get. The majority of that budget because they have the biggest project and they yeah. request up to 50 percent of it and we've been able to give that so if that is if that runs true to this as well and it might be more at the beginning in which case the conversations would have to be you know when that money is given out we have an 18 month sort of delay on the facade grant so you could have finished work and then still apply for it that many months later and that might help us use different budgets or uh, like different fiscal year budgets to help make a meaningful difference. Um, yeah, but I'm with yeah. you, yeah. And it, <laughs> maybe it there. is like a per unit, instead of like an overall cost, uh, like we're giving a percentage of their costs, we're giving something for the amount of units they're creating. Or, yeah, yeah. so many different or, ways to look at it, yeah. Yeah, we could do like a tiered system as well. Like if someone's renovating one unit, instead of giving them the same percentage as someone who's doing more units, we can do some sort of tiered system maybe. Yeah, because if someone's doing 16 or whatever it was from the Montana block, but someone else is doing two, I feel like an arbitrary percentage is going to make it difficult for us to decide who does what. That's absolutely true. And, and for larger requests, you folks could also consider, you know, paying out over multiple years, over multiple budget cycles. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, that sort of reverse question with our grant program. So to people saying, are is it is the proof that we're giving them a grant allowing them to then go get a loan? Because they have to pay for everything up front. And I don't know if this program would be the same so that you're not giving out money before it's come due because project costs may change, project may be like uh, canceled and then the money's already been given out and that's taxpayer money we need it back it's a lot harder to do than just um, waiting for the project to be completed and, and everything's to spec so in that case us giving out a like a promise of a grant if all the criteria are met may help people get that type of uh, commercial loan that they need in order to do the construction and buy the materials to begin with so then it's like well, I don't know they are getting it from another source, but we are sort of guiding them to do that maybe. Because well, and I would say in that situation, you probably have answered the but for question as in, in, in the direction that you right. would like it to go, right? Because no, that other you know commercial source of money would not have, or grant source of money would not have come along but for the URA's money, right? So then that's almost a better situation. I see, okay. So, mm -hmm. And then as far as reimbursement, I would always encourage that you folks work on a reimbursement basis, um, just as it lowers the risk. Okay. Well, you've certainly given me some good feedback to work with over the next few weeks. Um, the next meeting. Great. Do you think that it would be appropriate to invite any of the building business property owners with a vested interest in this or maybe able to answer some of our questions to the next meeting? Do you think we're ready for that? Yeah, yeah, my, my recommendation would be, I'll, I'll sit and I'll you know, work with the team and draft up some materials for your review and consideration at the next meeting. And that probably would be a good opportunity to host a public hearing and have you know, some members of the development community and some landowners, building owners, um, you know, kind of, tell 
that's what they think happened earlier. Yeah, that's super helpful. So we, how do we go about publicizing that we're having a public hearing? Um, I will blast that out through our newsletter. Okay. And I'll do, um, Jen and I can do some specific outreach to some people that we've been working with over the last few months, so. That would be great. And same to all of us, if we know people that meet this criteria, whether they own the building, own the business, um, specifically on the housing question though, and not just every, I mean, anyone can come, but yes, if, if they may have an opportunity to have housing units in their building or property um, in our district, if you know anyone that meets that criteria, you happen to run into someone in the next month, definitely invite them to come so that we can hear as many data points as possible before making, you know, decisions. And I think this first call will always be sort of a working draft that once we actually get applications in, we might have to revisit our, what we thought was gonna happen versus what's needed and, and all that. So just some more information, I guess, at this point would be the most helpful. Um, all right. Do we need a motion on this from our from us to move forward, or we're just gonna no. move on this forward and then we can on anything? So we're good. Open up to public comments. Yeah, call for public comment. All state right. State your name and address. Okay, we can open up the floor to public comment. Just state your name and address, and thank you. Keep it to a few minutes, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> My name is Patricia Graybo. I live at Two Hundred Four East Calendar Street, which is the Graybo Hotel, among other things. Thank you. I, I didn't realize this was coming up, and I will put a lot of this into writing, but I've had affordable housing. I've read them for 24 years. Uh, and we have, we have contributed 37% of our income to urban renewal this year, which is for, or of our taxes, which is $40,000. Uh, when we redid the streets in front of the Gray Bowl, it, we put in $50,000. The other half was covered by urban renewal. So altogether, our building over time is probably considered contribute $140,000 to urban renewal. But we would not be in business absolutely uh, in this market. First of all, a heating bill is $3,000 a month in the winter time. Our costs have skyrocketed. Um, and what I am an advocate for is a multi-use building. It won't, it won't survive in the other floor in the commercial market. Because I am such an advocate of all the buildings in our downtown having a commercial bent to them. If you take a look at Belgrade in 10 years, Unless we are viable economically in our downtown Livingston, our downtown will die because it has, we have to stay solvent. I mean, I'm retired, my son made $14 an hour for the depot center. How are we going to supplement the money we would lose on a building? So it has to be viable economically. There's a wonderful program that my son, other son applied in Santa Barbara, California to that is worth looking at. Again, multi-use building in, in concept. So a small percentage of that housing in the, the building that they, that turned into a hotel was affordable housing. It wasn't the whole building. It was just right. a, a part of it was affordable housing. The rest of the building, there was commercial aspects to it, and then there was a hotel. So it was a multi-use building. I don't believe at this point, having paid the bills for 24 years, that our downtown buildings will survive in, in the private sector. The Murray's an example without a hotel aspect to it. Plus, if we are going to survive commercially, we have to bring people into our downtown. We have to remain the commercial center for living. How do we do that? $240 million came into Park County from tourists in 2019. It's our, it's our lifeblood. So if we can take other buildings and turn them into what Grable has become, 
it's viable. Mm -hmm. And it is a multi-use building. We have, it won't be, you cannot have affordable housing anymore downtown. It's just too expensive. I, I can, I could no longer have affordable housing for our percentage of the Grable Hotel. Uh, it just doesn't, that's a lot. And you can't, you're not supposed to supplement your, you're supposed to make enough money to get by. So anyway, I, I think, love the idea of a public hearing on this and I will certainly uh, talk about some of these options. But the, the wonderful program that my, my son was involved in Santa Barbara, that downtown Santa Barbara is pretty expensive. Now that we've all put out, I, we put out $140,000 now that we put this money out, our downtown turns out that affordable housing isn't affordable anymore. So uh, a percentage of the building, yes, help with the commercial aspects of it and turn it into hotels. I think downtown could take four hotels very easily and they, it'd be wonderful because then we could, we could have affordable housing, we could have those hotels we could have people coming into our commercial area for commerce, and we, we have a win-win situation no matter what we do. But no more Miles buildings, no more Sherwood buildings, no more for the entire building. We have 13 hotels that created downtown Livingston. Uh, senior centers on the verge of bankruptcy. No more for the whole building or even a significant percentage of the building is affordable housing. It just does not pencil out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Thank you. I love new construction too. That's a great idea. Thank you very much. Any other public comment on this? We'll send it to you. Waving my hands. Any follow up board comments? Uh, I agree with, I'm sorry, <clears throat> did not make that clear. Like a percentage of units would be affordable, but I agree that it's, you want to have a mix of uh, socioeconomic status. Yeah, from an economic standpoint, unless Correct. you have an HRDC or something back, it, you know. Yeah. It's like a PUD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the multi-use aspect is interesting also. It might be something we might consider whether or not it's going to add some yeah. sort of... It's like zoning districts mixed use, too. You know, it's just, yeah. Same, same con concept. But I think these questions are all going to come up in, in conversations leading up to and in this next meeting from the people with existing buildings like why aren't they why haven't they are if it's a great business idea why haven't they already turned it into housing and some things we've talked about in this board in the past is like um sure just the cost alone is prohibitive and they're making enough money on their first floor business that they don't need to do it they might not want to deal with rentals if they're in the restaurant business they probably don't want to also be a, a tenant manager and in that case, HRDC did express interest in helping to do tenant management for these types of projects. But again, would that only be for low income or would that be for, exactly. would they be right. willing to handle every, every tenant coming through yeah. these units? And so a lot of this is definitely like in the idea zone and the concept phase. So I'm really glad to hear your feedback and in, in, in your a prime example with your building right there. So there's a lot of pressure right now to for some of those buildings that are empty downtown to, to actually develop. And it still has to be uh, for the buyer. It has to be something that's viable for them uh, economically. And that's why, for example, hotel <laughs> units um, as part of it helps create a market in which those units get developed. Otherwise, they stay empty. It's all about economics. So, yeah, we will continue researching. 
and sit with these questions for the next few weeks and then reconvene and, and hopefully come together on a consensus in some direction to move forward. Yeah, for, maybe for the public hearing, could we have like on a, a screen like five or six questions that we agree on? So just like. Sure. Right, we'll we have something on paper. Like, you know, Grant will have something on paper for the board by then. And, okay. You know. You will, yeah. So just so it's not just like, obviously public comments are amazing right. for points like the truth is making, but if we have like certain questions, like why haven't they done it yet? For example, right, I think exactly. A great question. Well, right. does incentivize you to you know, yeah. move forward, you know, it's, with this or with this, you know. Get some questions there. We're done. So that was currently blocking. <laughs> I don't do those things. You can't make one more comment. Sure. In fact, the URA should smile because the URA was the incentive behind. We, some of us worked really hard to get the Alma Moral back up and running. It was the big how long was it? 59 years or something. What happened is you already came along and said, okay, we'll, we'll put $360,000 into the renovation of the Albemarle, and that will go towards the fire suppression system and the bathrooms for potential bus tours. So $360,000 was enough to get them over the, over the, uh, to, so that they would actually renovate the miles, the uh, Albemarle. So it was your incentive money that actually helped out in that regard. That's kind of, at this couple of examples of things like that, that the URA has done. It's just, can I say it's a wonderful We're so grateful it's there, even though it costs us an arm and a leg. But we're grateful it's there. Thank you. Yeah, I think the program. We'll have to consider the different tiers maybe being just vacant second and third floors of existing buildings with businesses on the ground floor, um, new construction or redevelopment of existing construction entirely for housing. Those are sort of three different categories in my mind and that would be three different price points um, as well for all those different types of projects. And so we initially were thinking just the existing units up on the second and third floors of yeah. buildings that have other incomes. And that's what the gray building is. <coughs> right. floor is commercial and the second and third floor when my son and I got it was within three years of being in debt. Wow. So we restored it. It is now a multi-use building. We only have six hotel rooms, but it's enough to keep us going. There's also but there's no such thing as real low income housing unless you allow for these other commercial possibilities for a building. But just when I'm sorry, I didn't I, I, I'm sorry, I'm I'll be here. I'll write articles and I'll be here. Okay, I, great. I just have been through it for so long. Yes. Well, and we, we, I believe these projects we mentioned were for mixed use buildings already. No, they're for the second floor of Livingston. It's for like the old park hotel or uh, these, there's, there's 13 hotels and we can identify those that were hotels. That yeah, were, originally. it's a thing. Yeah, and, yeah, but well, they still have, they, the rooms are still there, well, the Mint, uh, I've been through every one, I've been president of building owners for 15 years, so I've been through it all. Anyway, just didn't mean that. I, as a my public comment, I will extend. Sorry, no. I'll be here next time. It's good to hear that information. And, when, and you can you can look at the situation for the for example at the senior center where it was the old Yellowstone Hotel, and when they took that on, um, renovating those old um, uh, hotel rooms into uh, apartments upstairs. Um, and that was a whole lot of that was volunteer work, I think, by, by um, retired.
retirees that knew how to do stuff. And, right. Uh, which is and, but uh, incredible. to this day, um, the senior center is still dealing with the ramifications of taking on an old building and uh, and uh, turning it into you know old old wiring, old plumbing. Yeah, it, all that stuff just never seems to go away. Right. And we so. do have to be careful with our program. That is a good example, like a place that already has housing and did the payment and did the work, or they were asking for a furnace and we weren't able to help pay for that with a facade grant. Right. Do we consider, I mean, then we're just like really broadening the scope, but if we're trying to be fair and honest and focus on like one aspect of helping with we're have affordable to housing. We're going to have some pretty quick because we have a okay. We got another planning meeting. Um, coming. <laughs> yeah. I just want to sum up that conversation, though. I think yeah. this next meeting is like to reframe it as not, hey, we have this draft for everyone to review, but more, we have um, we have ideas to help with downtown housing. We want to hear why it hasn't happened. But we, we want to hear from you what's blocking it, what would be helpful, and like really just to call for information and an invitation for the commentary versus us putting forth something that we feel is good without knowing yet what is possible. That's a good start. Yeah. Very good. All right. All right. Um that's all I have. Is it does anyone have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh we'll see you on the third Wednesday of next month. <coughs> Thank you very much. And um that is one, two, three. It's the 15th again. 15th.